Hello, and welcome to episode 199 of Dark and Stormy Book Club. Today, we have another visit with Spooky Baltimore. Enjoy. I'm Ann Dark. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. A podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Hello. And welcome back. This is our final episode before we have our 200th episode. We are so excited. We have never been 200 of anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, today we visit another place in spooky Baltimore, Green Mount Cemetery. Green Mount Cemetery is a historic cemetery in Baltimore, Maryland. Established March 15, 1838, it is noted for the large number of historical figures interned in its grounds, as well as many prominent Baltimore area families. It retained the name Green Mount Cemetery when the land was purchased from the heir of Baltimore merchant Robert Oliver. Green Mount is a treasure of precious work of art, including striking works of major sculptures, including William H. Reinhardt and Hans Schuller. Nearly 65,000 people are buried here, including poet Sidney Lanier, philanthropist Johns Hopkins and Enoch Pratt, Napoleon Bonaparte's sister-in-law, Betsy Patterson, and John Wilkes Booth, just to name a few. This comes from an article called The Dead Zone, Cemeteries, Sinister Plots, and Graceful Graves. It appeared in the Baltimore Sun in 1996. It's fairly old. It's about the only ghost story I could find relating to Greenmount, and I'm quoting here. Even on a bright fall October day, the Victorian Gothic Funeral Chapel at Greenmount Cemetery has the forbidding quality of a guest house for Quasimodo, a retirement home for Norman Bates and his mother, or a Halloween retreat for Michael Myers. Oh, now that's a guest list. <laughs> yes. Well, you've seen that building, and it yes, is. Yes, yeah, I, I get it. It is a spooky place. If the listeners want to look up Green Mount Cemetery, look at the chapel. It is a sight to behold. And I did not know this. Just about as old as the clock tower that holds Big Ben over London the gray and weathered chapel is a somber but beautiful folly of arches, buttresses, pinnacles, finials, and spires, all straining towards the heavens like a penitent sinner. Unsettled souls abroad on Halloween and All Souls Day could find no better portal to that land of the dead whose gates open at sundown before the Celtic New Year every November 1st. A cemetery since 1838, Green Mount was once the estate of Robert Oliver, a prosperous merchant and shipping magnate, whose country home stood on the hilltop where the chapel now reaches to heaven. The cemetery's very address, Greenmount Avenue and Oliver Street, still celebrates the old tycoon. Greenmount's only ghost is, unfortunately, from Robert Oliver himself. He never wanted to leave. Well, it's not him. He had numerous daughters, and I could not find her name, but 
she was sneaking out of the house as teenage girls do to meet they with do being your mother i know <laughs> she was sneaking out to meet with her lover she dressed up as a boy to sneak through the property when he saw this boy he thought it was the lover and he shot his own daughter oh my goodness and it is said that you can spot her wandering through the cemetery to this very day dressed as a boy or a girl it doesn't say robert oliver was so grief stricken that he vowed his estate would forever be consecrated as a cemetery in her memory there are people who say this is true and they've spotted the ghost and there are people who say it is not true well that's what that make so that's the story at the corner of Greenmount Avenue and Oliver Street it is huge it's pretty much a city of the dead definitely it has some of the eeriest architecture just the chapel itself looks like something out of a fantasy movie it's got spires and peaks very, very gothic very gothic and the cemetery is filled with dark mossy covered graves give it the character they aren't your typical graves there is one grave dedicated to elijah bond he patented the ouija board his grave is a ouija board right in greenmount cemetery there's statuary that are so gorgeous they belong in a museum they are some of the most gorgeous some of them look like they would just get up and walk away they yeah. are a photographer's dream if you go there especially in the fall you can get some gorgeous shots and go at dusk when the shadows are coming oh actually if you go on to the baltimore tourist page it is listed as a tourist attraction. Oh yes. It is number 5 definitely. They do give tours. Their most popular of course is Halloween. The most popular grave of course would be John Wilkes Booth. They say he is buried there. Nobody knows for sure because he was in an unmarked grave. They have since said that yes, he is there with his other family members. His brother was a famous actor, Junius Booth, and he is buried there also. We live in Harford County, which is outside of Baltimore. John Wilkes' family home is not too far from our house. That's right. There is one actual spook. It yes, just, there is. It is Alan Douglas, who was a spy master for the CIA, buried there. There are some books about Greenmount Cemetery that you can look up. Stones on Stones is a book with pictures of cemetery engravings or the etchings on gravestones. Greenmount is featured there. There is a book called Chesapeake's Book of the Dead by Helen Chapel, and then the Baltimore Sun newspaper and Innocrat Library work together on a book called Baltimore Memories and they have some things about Greenmount. I tell you what listeners, if you ever take a trip to Baltimore and would like to meet us at the graveyard, we would love to show give you, you around. A tour. <laughs> yes. The reason the cemetery is where it is was because back then it was outside the city and all these people wanted a nice park setting for a cemetery <laughs> boy did they get disappointed <laughs> well now it's right in the middle of the city i imagine back then it was a lot more park like yeah i'm where... sure it was the thing is the graveyard even though it's right in the middle of the city if you stand in the middle of the graveyard you would not believe you're sitting in a city other than when you see the skyline because it's so vast oh yeah it's like a place like tracy said a city of the dead by itself wherever you look there's another grave i and encourage all of you to 
take your little fingers and hit that little Google thing and check out Greenmount Cemetery. We promise our next Spooky Baltimore episode will not be a graveyard. <laughs> Please think about visiting Baltimore. You won't be disappointed. By the time we're done these Spooky Baltimore episodes, which we may never be done because there's so much spooky in Baltimore, you will be on a plane coming to Baltimore. That wraps us up. <laughs> Trivia. Last week's question was, where did the author Robert Galbraith get his name? A, from a book. B, from a hero and a fantasy. C, from a dream. Or D, from the author's brother. The answer is B, from hero and a fantasy. J.K. Rowling explained that she took the name from one of her personal heroes. Robert F. Kennedy, and a childhood fantasy name she had invented for herself, Ella Galbraith. This week's question is, which famous mystery author used the pseudonym John Redfern, Joy Lynn Carter, and Peter Benedict? A. Robert Bernard. B. G. K. Chesterton. C. Edna Buchanan, or D. Edith Partiter. Good luck. Thank you for visiting Spooky Baltimore with us. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll listen next time for our 200th episode. We have a few special things scheduled for that. I hope you'll join us then. And remember, life would be boring without a little spooky. Bye. Bye.